Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the woods behind the shop on this beautiful cold January day. And it is not beautiful because of the weather. It's beautiful because it has been 91 days since I have purchased this Harbor Freight electric log splitter, which means the warranty's up and the fun begins. Now, unlike most of my Harbor Freight videos, I actually love this thing. It's not even a piece of crap. Can you believe it? She has had many, many hot suppers. All of these pallets were full to the brim with split wood, probably about three or four cords worth that we heat our house with, and uh, hasn't had a single hiccup. She's had many, many hot suppers, and as you can see, she's got plenty more to come. But since the warranty's up, we're going to improve it. Because unlike the older splitters, the newer ones are only available with uh, two-handed operation, which means you need to have one hand on the button and one hand on the lever. This is for, uh, I guess you'd say, safety? I don't know. I think it makes it worse because if you've ever split some really hard wood, what happens when it finally goes through? Bang! It pops and splits wood right off into orbit and into your face. I actually have a scar to the left of my eye just to prove it. Um, so their attempt at safety, in my opinion, made it more dangerous. And that's what we're going to fix today. Ugh! Mother f Ugh! I'm getting too old for this sh All right. Got it up on the bench. She's heavy. What they lack in quality of steel, they make up for in quantity. So this is the problem right here. Two-handed operation. You gotta hold this momentary switch in to turn the motor on, and then activate that lever to make the ram move, which leaves you nothing to hold the wood and prevent it from flying off. So whatever our solution is, it's gonna be in this box. We need to find some way to activate this momentary switch with something other than our hands. I don't know if we're gonna go for an electrical solution or a mechanical solution. So let's crack it open and see what's inside. So what we've got inside here is a big 35 amp momentary push button switch. It's even dated with the data manufacturer for quality control. We've also got a 60 microfarad start capacitor. Uh, I won't bore you with electrical theory, but essentially what a start capacitor does is cause a phase difference in the AC current and gives a little bit more torque to the motor to help it start. If you have one of these things or you know, a garage door opener or refrigerator, anything with a big motor in it that isn't starting, it just sits there and hums, this is probably what's gone bad. And if this Harbor Freight log splitter ever fails me, this is the first thing I'm looking at is the capacitor. Just don't ever mess with them if you don't know how to work with a capacitor because they hold a lot of punch in them even if they're unplugged. You gotta know how to discharge them properly. Um, I don't think I'm gonna mess with anything electrical in here. I think I see a pretty quick and easy solution to our problem that's going to be mechanical instead. So I'll go ahead and button this back up and pretend I never saw it. So this is what we're going to use to make it work without our hands. This is one of those things I just saw it in the store years ago and thought, oh, that's cheap and I have a coupon, let me pick it up. It's a 15 amp foot switch. Um, I thought I might use it for a saw maybe or a sewing machine, I don't know. but. It's been laying around, it's dirty, it's dusty, and we're finally going to give it a home. Uh, let's first let's take it apart and make sure I think it's actually s safe. Because you never know with this stuff. Yeah, it looks good to me. You get your line cord in. Properly grounded. Insulated connectors and soldered onto the receptacle at the end. And then a micro switch, which... I'm sure is rated for enough current. Wouldn't be in here if it wasn't good enough, right? What I'm going to do is drill a hole through this guard and that guard, and we're going to stick a cotter pin straight down. Hopefully, it will hold the switch in permanently, and then we can turn the motor on and off with our foot pedal. Now, personally, I wouldn't attempt this without a depth stop on your drill bit, unless you've got pretty steady hands. Otherwise, you're going to go right through your switch and probably total your log splitter. All right, let's see if it works. 
All right, if I push down on the foot switch, the motor should come on. It feels good sticking it to lawyers who don't know what they're talking about, doesn't it? One other benefit of doing it this way is you no longer have to be on this side of the splitter to activate the switch. Because it's on a cord, you can be on either side. It's a little thing. One downside is the PVC insulation on this cheap cable. Uh, in the cold, it gets kind of stiff and it's kind of hard to keep it flat. So I might get a board and just screw it into a board, something to keep it more stable. And since none of my wood is long enough to use the full length, none of my wood is long enough. I put a little paver here just to stop it from returning all the way. It saves a couple seconds and it costs nothing. My wife and I started burning wood full time two seasons ago when our propane fireplace insert started having delayed ignition problems. It kept blowing the door off. I did my due diligence, I replaced a few things but I gave up eventually because, frankly, propane scares the crap out of me. Pressurized explosive gas that's heavier than air plumbed into my house by a stranger with an adjustable wrench and missing eyebrows? Yeah, no thanks. Teach his own, but wood doesn't blow up and it warms you down to your bones like no other heat. Of course, oil doesn't explode either, and we do have an oil furnace, which my wife would probably rather use so she doesn't have to mother the stove and a toddler. But she knows I love fire and has never once complained about keeping it going for me until I come home. Folks, you'll never find the perfect partner, but this is a great litmus test for someone you're considering spending your life with. I haven't been married all that long, and if any longtime marriage veterans want to correct me, I'm all ears. But if she, or he, is willing to fiddle, fuss, and otherwise baby your wood stove for you on top of everything else she has to do, just because it makes you happy, and this wood stove is strictly metaphorical here, it could be anything, uh, put a ring on it. If she insists it's not worth the hassle for her and cranks up the thermostat instead, and this is also a metaphorical thermostat, and welcomes you home to a cold, dark stove, well, friend, I would consider continuing your search elsewhere. I apologize, and I doubt very much anyone clicked on this video expecting a relationship advice. And frankly, I doubt very much anyone clicked on this video, period. But I had footage of me splitting wood, and I had to fill it with some kind of audio, so here you go. Well, got a lot more to go, but uh, thanks for watching.